Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have two more examples of how to solve a problem that has a momentum and energy part to it. Part one is the momentum where the collision occurs and part two is where we keep the conservation of energy. Here on the, the third example we have a pendulum which is hanging down of length L, mass big M for the pendulum, we have a bullet with a small mass M and some initial velocity which is unknown and we're trying to figure that out. The bullet will hit the pendulum, become embedded within the pendulum, and the pendulum will swing up to a certain height or at a particular angle. They can give you one or the other. Now, the question is, based on that information, what was the initial velocity of the bullet? So, for the first part, we have the equation that tells us the momentum is conserved. Notice that if the pendulum was not moving, the momentum of the pendulum initial was zero. We have the mass times the velocity of the bullet initially equals the sum of the two masses combined times the final velocity. If we solve this equation for the velocity of the bullet initial, then you can see that it's equal to this, but we don't know the final velocity. However, we know that the final velocity of part one will become the initial velocity of part two. Imagine the bullet had just struck the pendulum and the pendulum is beginning to swing up at that particular velocity. So here we can see that it had initially kinetic energy, one half m, the two masses combined, times the initial velocity squared. And of course, this initial velocity is the same as this final velocity. At the end, when it swings to a particular height, it will have gained potential energy, mgh, of course, two ma masses combined, no kinetic energy final, no energy loss, there's no friction, there's no movement. When we get to the very top, it stops. We solve this equation for V initial, which is the square root of 2GH, which sounds familiar already at this point, and then we plug that into this velocity right here, because we know that these two velocities are the same, and then we have an expression that allows us to find the initial velocity of the bullet. In our fourth example, we have a block that is being hit by a bullet. The bullet is embedded, the block begins to slide. At this point, there's no friction until it reaches the incline, and the incline there is friction. Let's call it mu, coefficient of friction. It slides a certain distance up the incline, or to a certain height, whichever they want to give you. Hopefully the angle is known. And then we see the relationship between h and d. So it doesn't matter which one they give you, you can solve for one or the other. Again, we have the conservation of momentum and the conservation of energy. In the conservation of momentum, we have the momentum of the bullet, plus the momentum of the block, but if the block isn't moving, it has zero momentum, and then the momentum right after the collision, m plus m because they stick together. We can solve that equation for v initial of the bullet, and I just put down whoop, here, v initial. All right. Now on the right side, we have the conservation of energy. We have the initial kinetic energy right after the collision, the block and the bullet are moving. Then we have the potential energy gain when the block comes to a stop of the incline, but we also lost energy due to friction on the incline. So when we solve for the friction on the incline, we have the weight, mg, times the cosine of the angle, which is the perpendicular component of the weight, times the coefficient of friction, times the distance it travels along that incline, because that's how we have to work to overcome friction. Notice we have the mass on every term, so that cancels out. We multiply everything by 2, so the initial velocity squared is 2gh plus 2g times the cosine of theta mu times d. And of course, if you want to solve for d in terms of h, h is d sine theta. Take the square root of both sides, and this is what you get for the initial velocity of the block and the bullet. That means we can plug that into the final velocity of the bullet and the block after the collision, which allows us to solve for the initial velocity of the bullet. So that is how we solve these types of problems. Hopefully with these four nice examples, you have a pretty good idea how to go about it. And that is how it's done.